As web designers or developers, one of the things we can leverage to make our lives a little easier is the Chrome browser extensions. Today, we're going to take a look at a collection of my favorite ones, ones I use on lots of different projects. So the first on the agenda, if you're an advanced custom fields user, is going to be ACF tools. Now, it might sound like it does a lot of things, but the reality is it does one job really, really well. And that is allows us to grab any of the code for any of our meta fields and then use that inside our design, inside our files very easily. So once you've got the extension installed in Chrome, all you need to do is go over to any of your field groups, go over any of the meta fields you've created, no matter what field type it is. And inside there, you'll see we get a new button called copy code. We'll select that, copy it to our clipboard, and now we can go ahead and use that any way we want. Now I've opened up a plain text editor on the side of my screen, and I'll paste that code inside there. And you can see that's the PHP code inserted. We can now use that any way we want. We're not restricted to simple free kinds of fields. We can use this on any of the meta fields in pro and free. It's a really great way of grabbing that code without messing around and then use it as you need to. Now, when you're building your designs, responsive is going to be a key component. You want to make sure that your site scales and looks great on all different kinds of resolutions. For that, we're going to be using another Chrome extension called Window Resizer. All you need to do once you've activated it is select it, and we can now go ahead and use any of the pre-built sizes. We can go in and create custom ones if we want to, but let's just say, for example, we want to check this out on something like a 1024 by 768 for an iPad resolution. We can select it. It now resizes that, and we can just make sure that our site looks the way that we want on that particular layout resolution. We can just save again, come in, we say we want a different. You can see this will set things up for all those different sizes. And the nice thing is with this, you can easily come in and you can go into the settings section and inside there, you can configure this the way you want. So you can set up various different parameters, which I would recommend checking out, but you can also go ahead and take a look and add new presets in. So you can simply come in, add a new preset, drop in the width, the height, the viewport, description, all those kinds of things, save that preset, and then you've got that available to you inside the Chrome extension itself. Pretty cool, and like I say, a completely free extension. Now, when we're building websites, one of the key things that's really frustrating is when you make a change to the site design, you look at it in your browser, and it doesn't reflect. We know that's a caching issue in most cases, and we know it's very easy to go ahead into your browser settings, clear the cache for the last hour, the last day, whatever. That's a bit of a pain. So we've got another Chrome extension that allows us to just clear the cache on the page we're currently looking at. This is all we want to check out. Very easy to do. For this, we're going to use the Chrome extension called Clear Cache. And as its name suggests, it clears the cache, but only for that page. All you need to do is click it. Cache is being cleared. Simple as that. We can now refresh, check our design, and make sure that the browser isn't caching things. Really quick, really easy, without having to go into those tool settings of your browser. Really, really cool. Now, there are times where you may be working with a client on a site redesign, and they may not have access to all the files, the back end of the website, those kinds of things, and you still want to grab the relevant images from that particular design, logos, those kinds of things. Well, for that, we've got an image downloader extension for Chrome. All you need to do is install it, and then when we click on it, it will now go ahead and find all the files on the page we're currently looking at. And as you can see, we can see all of those files on this specific page, and now I can go ahead and I can download them. So I can select them by just clicking on the little checkbox, and then I can go ahead and download them. So that's really, really easy. We've got some extra options on here as well. You can filter things based upon the URL. You can also set text, wildcard, or regex, so you can easily come in and make sure that you find exactly what you want inside the particular page. You can also go in and configure the width and the height of the images that you want to filter out. So you may only want to grab high resolution images over a specific size where you can use these settings on here. So we can easily adjust this by using the little sliders. We'll just check it, adjust the sliders, and you can set the minimum and the maximum using a really simple slide bar. The same goes for the height, so really, really simple. You can see I can now come in and I can just grab the images that I want. I can say only images from links if I want to filter things down even further. And I've also got the ability to save these into a subfolder and I can rename them as well. So great if you want to go grab images, rename them, drop them into a specific little subfolder just to organize things really quickly and easily. That's just a free extension for Chrome, just the image downloader. I really like that one. Now, sticking with tools that allow us to see exactly what's going on on a page and grab the right information to be able to recreate designs, those kinds of things, we're going to take a look at what the font. Now, I've covered this in previous videos. I love this. When I quickly want to find out what font is being used inside a design or font combination, or I just want to make a quick change to something to see exactly what I'm starting with, this is a great resource. 
All you need to do is enable it inside your browser, and then you can come over any font on the page, any text at all, and it will tell you in a little pop-up exactly what font is being used. But we can go further. If we then go ahead and click on that font, it now gives us all the details that we need. It tells us the font family, the size, the weight, the spacing, the color, all the important information that we need. Really, really useful. And then you can just simply go ahead, recreate that yourself, and you can click a second time on the page. And each time you click, it will then show another pop-up with the information about that specific font. Again, all the details that you need. To disable it, all you need to do is go back up and click on what the font one more time, and all of that is gone. A really, really useful tool. Now, another tool that I've covered in the past that I really like is CSS Peeper. It does a lot more than what its name suggests, which is just takes a look at the CSS inside a design. But let's take a look at it. Let's enable it, and you can see it's got three different tabs. The first one is basically that general. We've then got the option for colors, which will allow us to grab the colors inside any of our designs. And finally, we've got the assets, which are things like the files, the images, those kinds of things. So what we need to do, let's stick first of all with the general tab. And now you'll see when I come over the page, we get a little red bounding box that shows us what we're going to hover over and select. So let's just say, for example, I like the look of this heading. I can make sure that I've got that sort of covered off with a little red outline, I can click on it, and now I can find all the information about that particular design element over on the inspector panel. So you can see it tells me the font face, it tells us any of the spacing, the font size, the line height, the letter spacing, the colors that are used, the background colors, all those kinds of things. And we can then go ahead and we can copy that code from there for that particular color. So a really quick and easy way of grabbing that relevant information. If we choose a different element, for example, we'll take a look at this logo block, we'll select it. You can see it now tells me the size, and if there's any padding or spacing, it'll display that inside the area above for the object. You can see it tells us it's a div being used. If we go to our navigation block, you can see we can select that. And again, we've got information about that, colors, all those kinds of things available in there. So really, really useful if you want to grab that information. Now, let's come back out of that. Let's go back into the colors section. We can select that, and now this will show us all the colors that are being used on the page, including sort of transparencies, the opacity, the different settings, all those kinds of things. And then we can go ahead and we can just hover over any of these and we can copy that color code from there. And it'll take the full color code. If we use in any kind of transparency, it will grab the alpha information, really useful. You can see we can also go ahead and export, and that will then go ahead, export a zip file with all the color information. And if we open that up, you can see it has two different kinds of files inside there. We've got an Adobe swatch, so if you use Adobe, you can just pull this in as an ACO file format, and you have that, and you can use that in as a global sort of color palette. You can use it in lots of different ways, or you can see it also supports sketch. So you can easily grab those colors, pull them in, and then you can use those as and when you need to. Or like I say, you can just simply go ahead, hover over it, and just copy each individual value. And the final one is the assets panel. And this allows us to see the images that are available on the page. And then we can go ahead and we can simply export those if we want to. We can rename them. We can find information about the file name, the file size, all those kinds of things. So really useful to kind of like just take a look around what's going on on a particular website. The final Chrome extension today is Checkbot. This allows us to go ahead and check 100 URLs on our site and check for various different things like security, SEO, those kinds of things. Now, this is the free version. The pro version, the paid for plan, allows you to check as many as you've got on there. But for most use cases, I think 100 links inside a site is probably going to be more than enough for a lot of use cases. So what does it do? Well, it allows us to go ahead and kind of do a check on our site, or at least the first 100 URLs for it. It'll check SEO, it'll check for good practice, it'll check for security, those kinds of things, and come back with a report. So I'm going to open up the Bloxy sort of website, and inside there, let's go ahead and just run this. So as we click on the Chrome extension, you can see this now goes and takes us over to the Checkbot site. It puts the link in for us, and we can just simply hit to start going through the whole process. Now this is gonna go through and check out, like I say, the first 100 URLs, and then come back and give us some results. So once that's finished, you can see this now gives us an overall score for various different parts of our site. If we take a look on the right-hand side, it gives us an overall overview, kind of top-down view that shows the SEO, the speed, and the security. And as you can see, SEO is looking pretty good. Speed, again, is also looking pretty good. Security could probably do with a little bit of work in this instance. And you can see it tells us the number of URLs crawled, the number of pages, in the main section, then we get a kind of breakdown that gives us a, a more detailed overview. And then on the left-hand side, we've kind of got all the scores and we can see where we need to improve, where we need to sort of make changes and where we're actually doing a good job.
So for example, if we say set page titles, we can select this to open it up. We got a check mark saying that all these are working fine. We've got some information at the top to tell us what is checking for. And if we've got any errors inside here, they'll be highlighted with a little red X, which we can then go in and we can easily go ahead and correct things. So for example, we take a look at the page headings where we've got a couple of issues. You can see inside here, we've got a couple of pages that we could go ahead and put the H1 in there to correct that problem. So these are all relatively easy fixes. However, we come down and take a look at some other things. There are some other areas we may want to look at in a little bit more detail. For example, valid HTML. You can see this tells us the page. We can go ahead and go over to that page and select it and it'll tell us what the problem is. We can see we've got fine for like valid CSS and JavaScript and so on. And so we've got some alt tags missing, those kinds of things. So we can easily use this as a good starting point to correct these problems. So those are the Chrome extensions that I would recommend you take a look at because I think they're going to open up some great opportunities to make your life just a little easier and stay inside the browser to do this work. It's also worth noting that while these are Chrome extensions, some of them have Safari extensions. But if you're using a Chrome-based browser, then these should still work inside there as well. Okay, so all the links are in the description everything I've covered in the video. If you've got comments, questions, or feedback, or you'd like to share the tools that you use, drop those in the comments section below. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tats, and until next time, take care.